Hello, this is Bern, and if you'd like to end your fear and anxiety around dating, stick around because I'll be sharing with you how to do that on our episode today. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to your great life to be.com. Today is another edition of Get the Love You Crave, and I'm very excited to be sharing with you how to end the fear and the anxiety that comes from dating. For so many of you, dating has become a chore, a task, a job that you hate. <laughs> and when you engage in the world with this kind of feeling towards dating, inevitably the results you get are not optimal. And I get it. Many of you have been dating and you found that the guys that you connect with are not awesome or you feel like to get what you want, you're going to have to do so much more than you're willing to do. So here's the first thing I'll say before I give you the four steps that I can offer you right now to master this art of dating and have fun through it is that dating is part of the price to pay to get what you want. If you're unwilling to go out and connect with men, then you're going to have to settle for the first guy or for the guy who comes around and who's close to you. So if you really want to create a connection to the type of man that I know in your heart you want, and how do I know this? Because you would not be watching my videos if you didn't want an amazing man in your life, then you have to learn to enjoy this process more and to master it, be a pro of doing it. So the first step I'll give you right now to eliminate your fear of dating and enjoy being present more while dating is to stop treating dating like a beauty pageant. What do I mean by that? So many women feel unnecessary anxiety because in their hearts, when they go out on dates, they feel like this is a process where someone will actually judge them and say, yes, I like you or no, I don't like you. Yes, you're great or not, you're great. You're cool or you're not that cool. So if you go out fearing that people are not going to find you cool, attractive, amazing, interesting, fun, then I can understand how you can feel anxiety. I'm going to ask you on step number one to fully reverse this role. When you go out, your primary concern is not whether you are liked by someone, but whether you like the person you're with. It's not if the person finds you interesting, if you find the guy that you're dating interesting. It's not if the guy wants to see you again, if you would like to see the guy again. So reverse this in your mind, stop being a beauty contestant where there's 10 judges giving you a score and step into being the kind of woman who when you go on dates, you're doing it to see if you like to connect to the guy. As amazing as the guy might seem on paper, you want to check it out for yourself and you want to know if he has the qualifications and the qualities that would make you want to see him again. Okay, so if you reverse it from being judged to you being the one who's deciding, you get more strength and you get less fear. Second one is I want you to triple stack the benefits of dating. <laughs> what do I mean by that? Well, ultimately dating is going to allow you the possibility of creating a connection, a soulmate connection with someone, potentially marriage to, to the man of your dreams. Right? But if you only do it for that reason, if it's kind of like going to a gym that you hate because you want to lose 10 pounds, if you're practicing dating kind of like that energy, then you only enjoy the result, but the entire process will be a burden to you. But if you triple stack the benefits, that means that you recognize it. Yes, ultimately you're going to create a guide, but what if there's a few other benefits that you get in the middle? One of them is getting a chance to practice openness. Okay? Another one is having the ability to gauge the energy of guys. Another one is an ability, it's getting time to practice being present, being fun, being outgoing, getting curious, knowing more about someone's life. If you stack the benefits, creating more friendships. Some of the guys that you go out on dates may not be marriage material, but they could be friends for life sometimes. So if you treat this as not just those one major benefit and everything else sucks in between, but everything that you're doing, who you are becoming as a woman in the process of dating is just as important as the end result, then you will feel more compelled to do it because it's not about the guy, it's not about getting your soulmate, it's about becoming the kind of woman who can get this and who's open. Third step is refuse to date men who play games, period. A lot of the anxiety you feel when you're dating is when you're dating guys who are unclear on what they want or who play games. They play this game of seduction where they make you feel a certain way or they help you to feel a certain way. And when they have you on the edge, they pull back and they disappear. They do it again many times and it's tiresome and creates anxiety. So if you notice that a guy has a pattern of showing up strongly and then disappearing, tell him to go F off. <laughs> tell him to disappear. Don't engage. Don't waste your time. If you disconnect from men 
who play games, your dating process will be infinitely more fun and more enjoyable. So do that. Number four is practice the art of dating detachment. What do I mean by that? Okay, the art of dating detachment means that as I've been talking about in probably hundreds of videos by now, and I still mention it every time because I think it's important, is when you practice getting into the kind of life that you want, that's full of passions and excitement, and when you connect to men through dates, don't attach magical, mythical qualities to a man that you don't yet know. If you don't attach that, that man is the most amazing man I've made in my life. No, he's exciting and he's interesting. For him to be the most exciting and amazing man you've met in your life, you need time and you need uh, presence and you need to know that the guy is really vetted, right? So if you practice that art of attachment, that means that when you go on dates, you enjoy it and then you let go. You say, if it's meant to happen, it will happen, but I don't have to force anything into it. I don't have to text the guy to remind him that I exist. I basically, my job is to show up with strength, show up with vulnerability and continue creating connections. Now, if you continue creating connections, you're going to feel a lot more detached about one specific guy than if you're not creating more connections and you like the guy and you're not creating fulfillment in your life and that feels like you're attached to the man. So practice the art of attachment and recognize that through this process, as I said in number three, you're becoming a number two, I'm sorry, you're becoming a woman who is more alive, more fun, more open, more vulnerable and knows herself better and is gauging the energy of guys to a point where she can see someone in the street and feel energetically if that guy is a better fit or less of a fit based on the practice she has. I think uh, if you think this is powerful, insightful or useful in any way, I'm going to ask you to do three things. Number one, click like on this video. Number two, subscribe to my channel. And number three, on the link right now on your screen or in the description of this video, you're going to see a way for you, a link where you can subscribe to a three part blueprint. It's a webinar that I'm hosting where I'll be sharing with you how to find your soulmate in 90 days or less. Super powerful stuff and it's absolutely free. If you have any questions for me, place a comment on any of my videos and I'll reply with an answer or create a video just for you. Thank you so much and I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.